Hey YouTube, Anthony here, Bibles and Barbells. Uh, I wanted to do a video tonight as a follow-up to the one I did uh, the other night or last night on the persecution of Christians where I highlighted uh, the pastor in Arizona that's serving jail time. And yes, it, it upsets me. Uh, the links that I follow and the emails that I get every day upset me uh, from persecution.org uh, of persecutions of Christians around the world, uh, torturing, mutilation, killing, imprisonment, um, and the list goes on and on from country to country. Um, those of you that know me know I have strong feelings about speaking out against the persecuted, uh, for the persecuted and against those who are doing the persecutions. Um, but if you read scripture, you could see firsthand that Christians are destined for persecution. Um, if you look in Luke, tonight we're going to look at, I just want to look at a few passages of scripture and get get everybody into the word get everybody praying it's still we are still supposed to speak up we still should be outraged at what is going on in the world but we shouldn't be surprised that christians are being persecuted for our lord jesus christ said this would happen if you look in luke uh, chapter 21 I'm going to read verse 12 through 19 where Jesus is talking uh, to his disciples where he says, But before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. So all persecutions are done because the persecutors really hate Jesus Christ. This will result in your being a witness to them. Jesus is telling us the result of us being persecuted for Christ's name will end up being a witness to those who are persecuting. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me, but not a hair on your head will perish. By standing firm, you will gain life. Those, my friends, are the words of Jesus Christ to us, enduring persecutions today and those of us that are fighting uh, for Christians today. If you look at other parts of Scripture, and I'll post this in the description box, Isaiah 53, 7, the Lord Jesus Christ was patient under persecution. Verse 7 says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shears, so he did not open his mouth. And that is speaking of Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy 3.12, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Very simply, all those, if you're living a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted in some way, shape, or form. Paul is telling Timothy, and he's telling us. However, the wicked are prideful. In Psalm 10, 2, it says, In pride the wicked hotly pursue the afflicted. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. It's talking about those that persecute uh, the Christians in 2 Timothy 3.11, Timothy tells us, excuse me, Paul tells us, persecutions and sufferings such as happened to me, he's talking about himself, at Antioch, at Iconium, 
and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Now Paul is telling Timothy that he was persecuted in those different regions that he traveled through, uh, where he was preaching the word, and he was persecuted in every one of them, yet, but yet he was able to endure, and not on his own strength, but that which was given to him by the Lord. He said, the Lord rescued me. So it is God who delivers us from persecution. The wicked are active in persecution. This scripture in Lamentations 4.19 says the following. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the sky. They chased us on the mountains. They waited in ambush for us in the wilderness. That is how devious and sly the persecutors are, those that hunt after the Christians and those and God's people. In 2 Thessalonians 1 6, Paul tells us, For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you. So, my friends, I'll stop here for tonight. Those that persecute Christians around the world, in our country, will be repaid. There's a payment that has to be paid. The Lord will demand repayment, and he will be just and righteous in his dealing with the wicked, the unrepentant wicked that persecute Christians. So hopefully in tonight's recap of persecutions of Christians, understand that if you're living a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted. But also understand that the Lord is in control of everything. Nothing gets past the Lord Jesus Christ. His word tells us that. He is faithful to us, but yet we should stand. We should pray under persecution pray for those not only that are being persecuted but his word also tells us that we should pray for the persecutors so even though you may think that's impossible to do we are commanded to do that so let us not only pray for those that are persecuted but those that are doing the persecutions so that they may see the error of their ways because that is who we are. We are held to a higher standard. We are God's chosen people. So let's end there tonight. Hopefully this scripture will shed some light on what's going on around the world and what's going to continue to go on. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. But we have an advocate. We have Jesus Christ on our side. Okay? Thank you for joining me tonight. I'll close us in prayer and... Uh, the words of Isaiah 40, 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That is the verse of this ministry. Isaiah 40, 29. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us, your guidance, your wisdom, and your protection. We thank you that you are in control of all things, Father, and that nothing gets past you, and that you will judge all who persecute your people. You will deliver swift judgment to them, Father. But at the same time, Father, they are still able, while they have breath in their lungs, to repent of their wicked ways, of their sins, and turn to Jesus Christ for salvation. And that, Father, we pray tonight that many who are persecutors right now will become your people just like the Apostle Paul hunted and imprisoned and sent Christians to their death, but yet he became one of your greatest spokespeople of all time on this earth, Father. He was able to be converted only by meeting the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for those that are out there today persecuting Christians, that they too 
will turn to Jesus for forgiveness. We pray for those in prisons, those that have been persecuted, those put to death. We pray for their families. We pray for their stance for the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I speak, Father, there are many thousands, perhaps millions around the world, undergoing persecutions, and some even here in our own country. Father, I reach out. I want your hand to be upon them, your great love and mercy, your strength and your guidance to be with them. Father, help us in these troubled times, in these very, very difficult times that we are going through. We know that you, through you we can endure. And through Jesus Christ, all things are possible. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. God bless and take care.